okay so students we saw that psi x in the previous lecture psi x is b sin n pi x by l so we still do not have the value of b so in order to find out b we will be using the normalization condition if you remember the normalization condition this mod of psi squared dx was the probability of finding the particle within dx so you remember the total probability was equal to 1 or 100 percent and the limits of integration was minus infinity to plus infinity but here I have put 0 to L because the particle is only confined between 0 and L so no need to take the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity only take it from 0 to L so mod of psi square dx now psi is this so mod of psi square is psi star psi now this is not a complex quantity this is a real quantity so psi star is also going to be this so if I take the square if I take the square we have a b square and we have a sine square n pi x by l dx which is equal to 1 so in order to integrate this I've taken a 2 factor over here and a 2 here multiplied and divided by 2 so we have a b square by 2 we have a b square by 2 and 2 sine square n pi x by l dx equal to 1 so 2 sine square theta can be written as 1 minus cos 2 theta so it is b square by 2 integration 1 minus cos 2 n pi x by l dx equal to 1 so we have dx because dx here goes 0 to l is the limit b square by 2 is common out minus cos 2 n pi x by l dx minus cos 2 n pi x by l dx so dx <coughs> integration is going to give me and the limit is from 0 to l so it is going to give me l so it is l minus this is going to give me sine 2 n pi x by l by 2 n pi by l 2 n pi by l and the limit is 0 to l and whole is equal to 1 so you can check if you put 0 over here sine 0 is 0 and if you put l over here l l gets cancelled and it is sine 2 n pi and remember n is an integer so sine 2 n pi is again 0 so this whole term is 0 all you have is l so you have b square l by 2 b square l by 2 is equal to 1 so you have b square as 2 by l and b as root 2 by l so we have finally found b which is root 2 by l so what is psi x so my final solution so my final solution is this this so psi x is root 2 by l sin n pi x by l now some interesting consequences that will come out so we have k square if you remember uh, we did put k square as 2 m e by h cut square where, where e was the total energy of the particle and k was also n pi by l where n was an integer so if i take the k square k square so here we have k square is 2 m e by h cut square this we know this and this is equal to n square pi square by l square because k was equal to n pi by l so we have n square pi square by l square so what is e the total energy the total energy comes out to be n square pi square h cut square by 2 ml square this is in terms of h cut square if you want it in terms of this is the energy perfect energy of a particle in a 1d box in terms of h cut square now h cut square is h cut is h by 2 pi so it is h square by 4 pi square and by cancelling you get n square h square by 8 ml square so in, this is in terms of h square and this is in terms of h cut square now there are two very very important consequences that comes uh, that that manifests itself in this problem that particle that is a particle confined in a 1d well the two very very important consequences are first what should be the minimum value of n the minimum value of n is 1 so the ground state energy of a particle in a box can never be 0 
e can never be zero this is a departure from classical mechanics classical mechanics says that the minimum energy that a that an object can have is zero but quantum mechanics says no the particle cannot have a um, zero energy that is that is the minimum energy of the particle is h square by 8 ml square because minimum value of n is 1 it cannot be zero so the minimum energy value for a, for a particle cannot be zero according to quantum mechanics which is which is a departure from the usual uh, classical notation and the other one is you can see that the energy values are discrete in nature that is the energy is quantized you can see so the minimum energy value is n is 1 h square by 8 ml square the next one is n2 that is 4 h square by 8 ml square the next is 9 h square 8 ml square so in between h square and 8 ml square and 4 h square and 8 ml square there is no energy value so the particle in a 1d box cannot take any energy value the energy levels are definitely going to be discrete or in other words quantized so this is let's say e1 this will be the first excited state e2 this will be the second excited state e3 this is h square 8 ml square this will be 4 h square 8 ml square this will be 9 h square 8 ml square and in between these energy levels you won't have or the particle is not allowed to take the energies between these energy values so the energy level is quantized which is which is not the case when you define or uh, when you define or when you take a particle in a box in classical mechanics in classical mechanics a particle can take any energy value that is the energy levels are continuous not discrete I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example let's say instead of this instead of this box say you have a box and inside or a room let's say and you have a ball inside the room so this becomes a ball and this is a room in which you can have the ball according to classical mechanics the ball can have any energy values but according to quantum mechanics the ball can have only discrete energy values now the question is which is right which theory is right is classical mechanics right according to our naive understanding of the universe the classical mechanics or the so-called Newtonian mechanics the ball can have any energy value at first it seems that classical mechanics is right when you have a ball in your hand and you are inside a room the ball can take any energy values it is not that the it is not that the ball will take this energy value and then the ball will take this energy value and cannot take energy values in between so common sense says or tells us that the energy values of the ball inside a room is definitely going to be continuous it is not discrete but quantum mechanics says no any particle or any object which is confined within some limits the energy values are definitely going to be discrete it cannot take any energy values it can have one energy value and then the other in between it cannot take any energy values so but common sense classical mechanics tells us that if you have a ball in your hand in a, inside a room then that ball can take any energy values so the question is which theory is right is classical mechanics correct or is quantum mechanics correct definitely quantum mechanics is right classical mechanics is just the limiting case of quantum mechanics now we'll see why because our common sense tells us that a ball can take any energy value